Digital notes or paper notes? Which is the better version? Which do you choose? The hard or soft option? Sorry, that's the pet shop boys coming out in me. But seriously, over the last, toward the end of last year, I was thinking about my note taking. Sure, I have an Apple Notes with me or Evernote, or whichever notes app anyone's using, with me always on my phone. And that's fantastic when I'm walking the dog or perhaps even when I'm out exercising. But there are some times where I really need to sit down and just properly brainstorm an idea. Now that could be something like my YouTube video from last week where I actually planned everything out here on my paper notebook. And what I did once my notes were done, because this was a bit of an experiment, I used post-it notes to pull out the main points of the video and I just stick the post-it notes on there. And it was fantastic. It was great to turn off the screen for one moment and just pick up my trusty old pens. Here we go, my trusty old pens and just brainstorm ideas. And I absolutely loved it. Now, there is a little bit of something going on here because back in 2015, which is now nine years ago, I decided to go in on the digital world. Apple had launched the iPad, we had a pencil, I think it came out 2015, 2016, and I was also getting into the hand of using my digital notes. But it always felt something was missing. Let's be honest, digital notes are really convenient. You can take a load of notes in a meeting and then you can just edit them later and suddenly you've got digital minutes that you can send to everyone else. It's really quite simple. And if you're into using AI, you can actually get AI to summarize the digital notes that you've taken and boom, you've got your minutes of the meeting that you can distribute to everybody in your team within a few minutes. But what about those moments where you really need to just sit down and think something through? And I think this is where paper notes still has the advantage over digital notes. Now, I'll be honest, I have tried using the Apple Notes um, with the pencil and my iPad, and it is really, really convenient just to take notes by writing on my iPad. I love it, it's great. The problem is, is as your brainstorming ideas get bigger, you start having to scroll around to look for where you added points. The great thing about paper, and this is something that I picked up when I was creating these notes, is on here, I could write in, diff in the margins. It was all on one page. It was so useful, so handy to see everything there. But there is something else about using paper notes that you can actually build a hybrid system just by helping you to first start with your paper notes, give yourself a really good brainstorming session, and then scan them into your notes app, and then you can pull out the relevant points, much like I've done on here with my post-it notes. Now, I must confess, there was another reason why I decided to head back to using paper initially to brainstorm my ideas. I have an unhealthy love of fountain pens. I absolutely love them. This is one of my favorite fountain pens. It's a Dunhill Sentryman, and I've had this for about 12 years, and I absolutely love writing with it. And I also have my trusty Mont Blanc pen. Now I've had this since I graduated from university and I absolutely love the way that this nib on the pen has now conformed to my writing, even though I haven't really used it except for signing important contracts since round about 2015. But as I was planning for this video, I was going through my fountain pen collection and I came across this one. Now this pen is a cross and it has been in my possession for about 30 years. I remember buying this way back when in Leeds and this particular pen was the pen I used for writing all my notes in university and for writing in my exams. This is still, I consider this to be my examination paper. Now back then, I wasn't too concerned about 
what I was using, but I was using a, this is what we call in the UK, a legal notebook. It's very different from the US version, which is a yellow legal pad. This is, these are perforated pages. It's just simple, full scap size, and we, I'd still use these. All the barristers in the UK still use these pads or these notebooks. Very reminiscent of the exercise books I used to use when I was at school, or they were a bit smaller. But I still have a few of these around, although they're not very fountain pen compatible. Because if you're using fountain pens, one thing that you do really need to be aware of is the kind of paper you are using. Because if you use poor quality paper, the ink bleeds. It doesn't actually come through very nice and it can actually go through to the other page. Now I use uh, Rodia notebooks because these paper, this paper here is very fountain friendly. Uh, I'm informed Japanese paper is also very good. I haven't tried it, but you know, it's just really useful. Now, before we move any further, I just want to give you the strategies now of using a hybrid paper into digital system. So let's move into the, 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 the strategy, if you like, of this video. You will notice in this particular notebook that I have a number of post-it note tabs at the side. Now there's a very good reason for that is because quite a few, quite often when you start initially brainstorming ideas, it's not necessarily immediate. You don't get all your ideas out immediately. It does take a little bit of time. So I have a few things. I have over here, I have my uh, workshop that I'm doing next month. Uh, details here, so my initial ideas and notes in there. I've also got the YouTube video from last week in there. So what I've done is I've added these little post-it note tabs just so to let me know that they are current and I'm currently working on them. They haven't been scanned in yet. Now, as I go through this, what I do is I will scan a page in once it has been completed. Now, when I've done that, all I do is just put a little, a little note at the top of the page to say that it's been scanned and it's now in my notes. The great thing about Apple Notes, which is what I'm using this particular system with, is that it, because I write the titles in the, the capital letters at the top, it actually recognizes my handwriting and it also then automatically gives the name of the note. Now, once it's in my notes app, this is where the magic happens. That's because all I need to do then is just to summarize the main points. However, that said, Apple Notes, Evernote, OneNote, there are many, many applications now, notes apps out there that have something called OCR, which is character, uh, no, op optimum character recognition, something like that. Optical character recognition, OCR. Now the thing is, originally that was all with type. So if you, you know, scanned in a PDF or something with type, it would recognize it. But today it now has handwriting recognition. So as long as your handwriting isn't a complete mess, it will recognize your handwriting and pull out keywords, which is really all you need if you're going to do a search. However, I actually prefer to then just go through and summarize the main points by typing them out. Okay, it may find that you may think, oh, that's, you know, duplicating in a way it is, but what it's actually doing is reinforcing my ideas and helping me to plan out. Now, remember, I'm only using paper notes in the initial planning stage. Pretty much 100% of what I produce in terms of content and documents will eventually be digital, and I'm pretty sure that will be the same for you. So the great thing is, is once you've scanned it in, you can then start using that as the, the basis or the foundation of whatever project or idea or whatever it is that you're using to create stuff like this. And it's just absolutely brilliant. And there is just something about using handwriting when it comes to brainstorming. There are studies, now remember, if I, let me go into my notes because I have the notes for this video here. If I go into the notes for this video, there is a study from 2014 by Pam Muller who actually studied the benefits of using handwriting versus digital. And there is something about what lights up in the brain when we're using a pen and piece of paper. 
I think really what the, the conclusions of the study was is that the fact that writing, handwriting, slowing you down. But there is a direct connection between your hand and the movement, that, that movement of your hand uh, going from your arm to your brain. It somehow makes, helps you to brainstorm that little bit easier. And let's be honest here, we probably are looking at a screen or a monitor a little bit too long each day. So maybe this is a great way of just being able to step away from the screen or the monitor and just to sit on a sofa with a notepad and just brainstorm your ideas. I think you'll probably find that you're going to have much better ways of just getting stuff out of your head and into paper and then using the digital system to get it into task managers or your notes or even if you want to carry on working on this kind of project, you know, your notes or your planning. It's just a wonderful way of doing it. And because of the technology we have available to us today, we can use our favorite pens. I mean, I know a lot of people like using rollerballs and all sorts of pens and colored stuff. To be honest, when I was at school, I never actually graduated to the rollerball or the biro as we called it. And by the time I got to middle school, I thought, hey, well, <laughs> I've got this nice, these nice fountain pens, I may as well use them. As I say, I've been collecting them for a long time and I do love writing with them. So there you go. I wanted just to share that with you this week, just so that it gives you another idea that you may want to use that just helps you to slow down a little bit when you're planning out ideas. There is just something wonderful about the paper, uh, about using paper to, to grab your ideas. And I, I actually have loved this. It's been a wonderful exercise this year and I'm already filling up <laughs> this notebook. And the great thing is, over the years, this can be put in a box, it can be stored in my storage cabinet and I don't have to worry about compatibility issues in the future. And you know, who knows, in 20 years time or 30 years time, I'll come across this notebook and go, oh yeah, I remember planning out that video. There's just something, I don't know, just something nice about that. Anyway, I wanted to give you an alternative to digital notes, so here you go. Using paper notes to initiate the pr planning process and then once you've fed out all your ideas, maybe after two or three days, then you can move in, scan it, get it into your digital system and boom, you're good to go. So there you go. Thanks very much for watching this video. Now, if you want to know how I actually organize my notes in Apple Notes, then this video up here will show you every reason why I use a system called GAPRA.